Here I'll show you how to instantly fill hundreds of thousands of rows with numbers, dates, and formulas in Excel. And then how to kind of build that out into a sparse little template showing you some of the pitfalls of working with so many rows in Excel, and then how to get around some of those issues. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. For the first example, let's fill in 250,000 rows with numbers. So starting at 1, going up to 250,000. So easy. Just type the first number in the first cell, 1. Go to the Home tab. Go all the way over here to the Editing section and Fill. It's a tiny little button with a blue arrow. And click Series. Now, once you're here, you figure out if you want to fill in for the rows. So the rows would be going right all the way across. Columns will be going up and down. Most likely you're going to want to use columns. So let's do columns, then linear, and step value is how much you want to go up each time. Let's keep it simple for now. One, stop value. How far do we want to go? We want to go to 250,000. So that's it. Columns linear, step value 1, stop value 250,000, hit OK. And there we go. Let's hit Control arrow key down, 250,000. It's as easy as that. Enter your first number, Home tab, Fill, Series, Series in either rows or columns. We want columns for up and down. Step value, how much you want to increase it by each time. Stop value type linear that's it now let's say we want to increment by five so we can put one over here or actually let's do this zero over here fill series columns linear step value five stop value let's say 50. Look at that, how awesome is that? Now, I gave you a really short example for this one right here, and that's not gonna be so important to use for a very small series, but if you wanted to make it go to 500,000, something like that, then it's very helpful. You just have to remember, tiny little button all the way on the right of the Home tab, Fill, Series, and that's it. Now, I'll show you a quick example going to the right over the row. So let's select Zero, Fill, series rows linear step one stop 10 okay so just like that now remember you don't have as many columns so going left to right as you do rows most of the time you're going to want to number the rows like this so let's go ahead and remove that now what i want to show you is how you can very quickly build out a template using this method. So what we could do now is let's go ahead and delete this guy right here. Let's say you want to build all your formulas and your functions right now before you have data set up. And you want to copy the formula and the functions all the way down to 250,000 rows. Well, if you don't have a column like this over here, it's going to make it more difficult. But once you have this column here, which is the same size as your data set is going to be, we can build some formulas. So let's build a very simple sum formula. You'll probably use this. Let's say we're going to have four columns of data, including column B. Now it's going to give me a warning, says it's a circular reference. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Don't worry about this warning, doesn't matter. Now that we have this formula here, all we have to do, double click the quick fill handle in the bottom right of the cell. So select the cell with the formula and double click that and it will fill down to every single cell all the way down. And we can double click to make sure it references the correct rows and columns. Now what we can do, we're all the way at the bottom. So I just hit control arrow down, arrow key down to get here. We're going to hit control shift arrow key up. And that will select all of the data that we just put in there. And let's just go ahead. You could either cut and paste this, but I'm going to go ahead and put my arrow to the end of the box, click and drag it over. 
So now we can have a sum over here. It's going to take a little bit of time because of how many rows there are. So how long it takes depends on your computer. Let's double click. Sum B2 to E2 all the way down for all of my data. So now if I enter some stuff here, I get a nice sum. Let's see what this little warning says. The formula in this cell refers to a range that has additional numbers adjacent to it. So basically Excel is just saying, hey, listen, I see that you want to sum these four columns, but there's also a column full of numbers here. So why aren't you adding that? Don't worry about that. It doesn't matter. They're just trying to help you to prevent you from making errors in your code. We can click this and we can hit ignore error. But really, these green little triangles aren't going to affect your code or worksheet at all. Now let's continue to build out the template by adding some dates. So we're going to quickly add lots of dates. And adding dates is pretty simple here. Let me zoom in real quick. Let's say we want to type in, I'm just going to put dates. We want to type in the first day and we want it to add a day for every cell. Just type in the date, make sure Excel sees it as a date format. We can see up here in the number box that it does. And go to the bottom right hand corner, click and drag it down, and you'll see that each cell has grown by one day. And now we could double click in the bottom right hand corner, and it's going to fill in the dates for every single row all the way down to the year 2,702. So you probably wouldn't do this with 250,000 rows, but that's how you can quickly add the dates. Once you've got your data over here, just like with the formulas, put what you want in the first cell and copy it down. Now, let me go ahead and delete this. Let's do something a bit more practical. For the dates, if you're creating a template, you probably don't need every single day. You're probably going to be doing something for the weekdays, for the business days. So what you can do, let's start with date. So that's a Monday. Now let's copy it down a little bit. I'm just going to do a small selection here so we can see everything on the screen. All right, so we have every single day, including some weekends. Now what if you don't want the weekends? Go down here to the bottom right. This little tiny thing appeared. Auto fill options, click that, and we can go to fill weekdays. Now notice how this will change. Right now it's 13, 14, 15, sequentially all the way up to 21. Fill weekdays, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, no 18, no 19, and then 20, 21, 22, 23. So that's a nice little feature to have Excel automatically remove all of the weekend dates. And notice that these are dates, they are not formulas. But if I go here, change it to general, we can see it's the date serial number. So you now know how to enter lots of dates, numbers, and even formulas. But now I want to show you something that can cause problems when you're dealing with this much data. So you've got tons and tons of rows. Now let's go over here and let's create another formula. It's called formula V2. All right, formula over here. Let's just say this is January. And this is also kind of neat. It will work for the months. I put in the first three letters and I can copy it to the right. January, February, March, April. Lots of cool fill things you can do. But let's focus on the large data set that we created. Okay, let's go over here and create a simple formula, simple function, the sum function. Let's copy that down and watch what happens. I'm going to double click. We can see down here eight processors calculating. Now I'm on a laptop, so it's going to go a little bit slow. Depending on your system, it could take forever or it could go very, very quickly. What I'm going to do is hit escape just to kill this really quickly. Now we can see we have lots and lots of data. Now watch this. We have so much data. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to start typing really quickly and hit enter. Let's see. Is it going to do anything? Mm, no, not really. Still waiting. Still waiting, still waiting. What if I hit enter again? So you can see it caused a bit of an issue. 
It takes a long time to enter stuff. And when you hit enter, it doesn't always work. Hit it again. Finally, it updates. Things just aren't working right. And you can see down here that it's calculating everything again. It's processing. It's going to slow your worksheet down so much. So let's hit escape. Stop that processing. Go to the formulas tab. Go to calculation options and hit manual. Now I can do whatever I want in the worksheet as quickly as I want. So that's a little tip if you have a lot of rows. But what I just did, it's very important to understand, is I made it so that all of these values are not going to be recalculated every time I do something in the worksheet. So the default way that Excel works is anytime I input something, so I'm typing now, and the moment that I hit enter and input it into a cell, the entire spreadsheet recalculates. Every formula, every function, it recalculates itself because data just changed. It needs to make sure that it reflects the changes in that data. So it's a good feature to have, but when you have tons of data or a slow computer or both, it takes forever to do the smallest changes in the workbook. So what you can do is turn off that default feature, the default calculation settings, by going to Formulas tab, Calculation Options, and set it to Manual. Now it will only update everything in the worksheet when I tell it to. I can hit F9, or I can on the Formulas tab hit Calculate Now, or just hit Calculate Sheet. And then you can update everything and have it take a long time when you're ready for it to do so. So make all your edits, hit the calculate button, leave your computer for 5-10 minutes, and come back when it's done. But it's very important to remember that you have calculation options turned off. Otherwise, you're going to wonder why when you go over here and you start entering data, huh, why isn't, okay, we got a little formatting issue here, no problem, it's still a 9. But why isn't this updating? It says zero. Let me look. Sum B3 to E3. What the hell is wrong? Well, because calculation options were turned off. So that's the one real issue with turning off the calculation options. So I caution you on that. But when you're working with a massive set of data, it can be a really helpful thing to do. So let's go back here. And I'm going to turn it back to automatic. That's the default setting. And you can see it immediately starts to calculate. We have processing going on down here. It's going to take forever. Hit escape, kill that. One thing that you can also do, let's say that you've gotten all the results you want from all of your data and it's not ever going to change again. You don't need any more of these formulas, any more of these functions. All you need are the results that have been generated from them. What we can do, I've shown this in a few tutorials, maybe my favorite shortcut in Excel, Select all of the data, hit Control C, Alt E S V, Enter. Now it's going to take a while because I got tons and tons and tons of data here. But once your data set is completely finished, ready to go, then you can run this and then leave <laughs> because, <laughs> as you can see, it uh, can cause everything to freeze. So let's skip ahead a little bit. And if I go over here, you can see no more formulas, just the values that appeared in the cells. And what that means is that we can have calculation options on automatic, still, and then we can do whatever we want, no problem, because those formulas don't exist. So there's nothing to recalculate each time I enter data. Now, of course, you only want to do that once you make sure you have everything exactly the way that you want it over here. A couple little tips when working with rather large data sets. Now for the file you can download, what I'm going to do is to put the formulas back in, but delete all of these here. So it's not going to completely freeze your machine when you download it, but you can add the formulas, copy them down if you want. So that's how you can start with a blank worksheet and create hundreds of thousands of rows of data and formulas very quickly. And then you can go ahead and do whatever else you want with it after that. And you're not wasting your time on stupid things like numbering the rows. But just remember, it all starts on the Home tab, where you enter a number in a cell, go to Fill, Series, choose Rows or Columns, Linear, Step Value, the value by which you want to increment, Stop Value, the maximum value that you want to have, 
and hit OK. And that's how you can instantly fill numbers, dates, formulas into hundreds of thousands of rows in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.